Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to knit a soap saver. Um, now a soap saver is basically a little bag type thing, sort of like these ones here that I made earlier. Um, and basically, you know all those little bits of soap that are left over? like when the bar of soap gets way too small to use um, and you just throw it in the bin. Well basically a soap saver is to save those pieces of soap so you don't waste them. Um, so you would put your soap in your bag, your soap bar, and do it up and then just use that in your shower or bath or even at your sink to wash your hands, face and body and everything like that uh, and then hang it up to dry. Um, another good thing about soap savers is where you don't have to put it in a soap dish or on the side of your bath or on the side of your sink or on any shelving in the shower. Um, you don't get that soap scumminess left over on the side, you know, because you hang it up and it dries. Um, now these bags are made with acrylic uh, type yarn. So these aren't meant for soap savers because the type of yarn I've used with these does not hold up well with water. Um, for a soap saver you need a good yarn that will hold up well against water. So you will need something like this yarn, um, which this is 100% cotton, cotton kings, ooh, camera angle, cotton kings. Uh, this is a cone, one of their cones. Um, now. I got this at a website called Hobby um, and I'll put that website up on the screen for you so you can go and have a look on there. They are a really good source for any knitting accessories and yarn um, and they're good prices too. And there's something they do which I really like. They do these kind of, I guess, lucky dip mystery bags. Um, and basically, uh, they have different priced ones. So they have like five pound ones, 10 pound and 20 pound and so on. So you pay that and they put in mystery items and you find out what you get in the bag when it arrives in the post. Um, and I've gotten a few of these mystery bags and got some really good yarns from them and some other little accessories from them as well. So yeah, they're really, really good. So do check that website out. Um, so yeah, with a soap saver natural yarn is better um, and a thinner yarn as well so this is this yarn as you can see is very thin the thicker the yarn the longer it's going to take to dry and you need a yarn that is going to dry quickly because if it stays the longer it stays wet and soggy the more chance there is of it growing bacteria and other nasties. So you want something that is going to dry quickly. Um, and cotton yarns, thin cotton yarn is really good for that. You could also use other natural, natural yarn like hemp or jute or what have you. So yeah, go with what you like. I'm using this because I love the colours on it. Um, so I'm going to put that over there. Right now, what else you will need? Obviously your loom. Now I'm doing this on a round loom uh, because I find it easier using the round loom. 
uh, but you can do it on a long loom as well. Um, you can even crochet it if you like. Um, now you'll see on my loom I have the two red pegs here. Um, now that's just like a visual aid for me um, because I'm going to be creating a kind of split area. If you see on this baggie here that I made, there's a kind of split area there and I folded it over here so that I could put a drawstring in there. So the red pegs are a visual aid for me so that I know where that split is going to be. Um, it's a really good way. These looms are brilliant because you can remove the pegs and interchange them. Um, so yeah, you need that loom, your loom. You will also need a loom hook and a darning needle and a pair of scissors. So yeah, that's what you will need to do your knit. Now I'm going to get started. So you'll see I've freed up some of this yarn from the cone. The cone is sort of here on the desk. Um, these cones you can put on the floor um, so you can just pull the yarn as the yarn will free itself as you knit. Um, but I have a cat so it's safer the yarn beyond the desk. Um, so yeah, I've freed up some of the yarn so that we can easily work with it without having to go back to the the cone every few seconds. Right, so what you need to do now is take your working yarn, which is all of this that is attached to the cone, and we need to take a nice length of it here so we have a bit of a tail. Um, and we need to see this peg here. This little lonely peg on the side of the loom. That's called the anchor peg. So basically we need to anchor our yarn to that peg. So you can do a slip knot. If you're good at doing those, I'm not so great at those. Um, I struggle with hand-eye coordination, my sight and uh, finger dexter dexterity and stuff. So I find it really difficult tying things like slip knots. So I'm just going to tie a granny knot, which is just a basic knot really. Um, and I find the granny knots are a lot easier to undo and loosen during the work, during the knitting work. Um, so yeah, right, so put that on there, I'll tighten that. Now with a slip knot, if you tighten it too much, it is very difficult to undo. Well, for me it is anyway. Uh, but with a with a slip knot, I mean with a granny knot, to undo it, doesn't matter how tight you do it, to undo it, just put your loom hook in underneath the knot and pull up and it loosens it. So... Yeah, it's a much easier knot, I find. So let's do that up again. Right, so now we're anchored to the loom. Let's put that under there for now. What we need to do is start e-wrapping. Uh, now, e-wrap is a stitch that looks like a cursive E, which is why it's called the E wrap. Now what you're going to want to do is start on your first red peg here, go round 
behind the peg and then bring it round to the front and right round and there you go you have a e-wrap stitch do the same again with the next peg so round the back of the peg round to the front and right round excuse my fingers getting in the way and push down your loops as you go I'm just gonna get a little bit tangled with the arm here at the moment let me just untangle that there we go so if I maybe zoom in a tiny bit onto oh that's out there we go now maybe you'll be able to see what I am doing from there right so round the back of the peg bring it round to the front and then round to the back again so it's quite easy push down your loops and then basically do that right round your loom on every peg when you get to the next red peg stop and don't go any further so I'm going to pause it here while I um, thread the rest of these pegs so I've wrapped e-wrapped each peg um, now when you get to the next red peg what you need to do is go around the back of the peg for the e-wrap come round e-wrap it once like that push the loop down so e-wrap that once and then you're going to need to bring the yarn this way okay the working yarn so we need to go back on ourselves now so now that creates a u stitch on that red peg there so go round again the opposite way with the e wraps so e wrap the blue peg and keep going then do the same when you get to the red peg you, the next red peg uh, you do the U stitch on the next red peg and then go back again um, so what you what you need to end up with is a gap in between <coughs> a gap in between the two red pegs where there is no yarn at all because you'll notice in between the blue pegs are yarn you can see a line of yarn in between them you do not need yarn in between this these red pegs because that's what's going to create our split where we're going to put our drawstring so yeah just do this um, I'm going to do it four times so that I end up with four loops on each of the blue pegs so I've made it to the next red peg and I'm going to e-wrap that again and bring that loop down and then I'm going to bring it this way and and carry on e-wrapping so then every peg will have the same number of loops on it um, so yeah and just carry that on like I said I'm doing it four times um, because if I only do it two or three times the work will be too loose and we will end up with loads of holes big holes in it um, so I'm doing it four times 
so that the work is tighter and neater. Um, so yeah, do, do it as many times as you like, really. But I think four times with this this thickness of wool of yarn is probably better. So I will be back to show you the next step. So now, guys, we have uh, four loops on each peg. Uh, so now we need to start to yarn over. So basically to yarn over, all we need to do is grab the bottom loop and pull it over the top three and over the top of the peg and off the peg. Now on the first peg, it might be very stiff and you can't pull it away from the peg. Now to loosen that, so you can get it over the peg. All you need to do is come down here to the knot you made for the anchor, put your um, hook underneath that knot and gently pull up on that and it should start to come undone slightly. Um, and that will loosen this bottom peg, this bottom loop on that peg. It's got looser. Um, now it will be tricky at first to get these loops over uh, the peg, so don't don't worry too much about that. The first couple are usually a bit a bit hard to get over the the um, peg. So bring those loops down once you've yarned that over. Now you can tighten your anchor again. So pull that tight. Um, and then what you need to do is make sure you anchor your working yarn. So wrap that a couple of times around the anchor peg just to secure it. You don't really need to tie it or anything like that. Um, just secure it like that, just so that there's no chance of it untangling or loosening on that peg. Um, so yeah, just keep yarning over then. So the bottom loop, pull it up over the top three loops and over the top of the peg. Then pull your loops down. And there you go, you've yarned over or knitted over as is otherwise known. So again, I'll show you. Grab the bottom loop, pull that up over the top and pull your three loops down. So basically do that all the way around the loop, the loom, so that all you have left on your pegs is three loops. So I have yarned over or knitted over and as you can see the work starting to take shape. Um, that is your first stitch there. Um, now if you can see on the red peg here. It looks very loose, but don't worry about that. That will tighten up as you go. Um, so the more stitches you do, the more that will start to tighten. So don't worry too much about that. Um, it will all be okay in the end. <laughs> so basically now what you would do is undo the working yarn from the anchor peg and then basically just again a U stitch there on the red and then go around with E wraps again until you have four loops back on each peg. Um, and once you've done that with your four loops, 
you then just go back and yarn over again. Um, and then just keep doing that until you have the desired length you would like in the middle of your loom. Um, and remember to stop at the red pegs. You need to keep a clear gap between the red pegs for this point. Um, then you should, once you get a long enough piece of work, you can then fold it over to create your drawstring space on your work. Um, and I will be back um, to show you the next step. So I've done a few stitches, um, as you can see there, and it's starting to look very good. And you can see the colours there, goes from a pinky purple to a light purple and blue, round to like the greens and bright neon green um which is really cool so it's creating a nice pattern with the colors but now we're a few stitches in we need to release our anchor because if we leave our anchor there tied um throughout the work it's just gonna bunch up here and your work will end up um, misshapen and it will cause problems. So what you need to do is just put your hook under the knot, pull up gently and it will come undone. Then what you need to do is you need to pull that anchor tail, anchor yarn, to the middle of the loom, like that. So it's free at the back. Now a, a quick tip for this anchor yarn, because it does tend to get in the way a little bit, and I have issues with knitting it in, getting it tangled, with the working yarn and creating a whole big mess. So I'm going to give you a quick tip on how to avoid some of that. Now, if you have a clip of some sort, now I use hair clips, just like the hair slide clips, because they work perfectly. So if you have a small hair slide clip like this, um, just get your anchor yarn and wind it around to there or ravel it up bear with, I do find this a little bit tricky um, so yeah, ravel it up as much as you can. Try not to pull on it too much. Um, and then get your hair clip and clip that in the middle. There you go. Now that you can see where that is at all times because the clips on it it's going to stop it from unraveling and it's going to stop it from becoming tangled so much and it's going to keep it out of the way whilst you're working so there you go that's a quick tip, quick tip for you there um, so yeah, now basically just carry on, uh, like carry on with the e-wrapping and then the knitting over 
and remember before you knit over you need four you need four loops on each peg before you knit over and then when you e-wrap you need three loops on each peg so yeah so I have got my desired length look at those colours love the colour pattern that's happening here um, if I turn it over you can just see that all the little V shapes kind of fish tailed looks awesome with those colours tangled here a little bit but it looks awesome so now we're going to do the next step so we need to fold this over on itself so basically what we need to do is if we get both of the basically we need to fold it sort of like that um, so if we get both of the corners here and attach that to the red peg first now this might be a little bit tricky and it might take a little bit of time and a little bit of putting the loops on and taking them off again to rearrange them to make sure you get the correct loops on the correct pegs um, because if you don't get these loops in the correct places uh, your work will end up a bit wonky and misshapen so we don't we don't want that to happen so I've got the first loop here in the corner so I'm gonna pull that over and attach it to that red peg there and I'm gonna try and find the same loop on the green corner here um, now this one might take me a minute because it's slightly tighter than the pink side than the pink and purple side and that is because of the tail now you can loosen that to find the correct loop and I believe I've found it I think it's that one. I think, yes, I think it's that one. That looks correct. I'm just making sure I double check because I don't want to get the wrong loop. So have to be very careful here so yeah I think it is that one so yeah I'm going to attach that one to the second red peg there we go now you'll see that in between the two red pegs there is still no yarn we do not need yarn there not yet so right now we've done that now it should be easier to find the rest of the loops in the correct orders so I think we'll start here on this side so there's one of the loops there I believe the pink one I think yes that's correct so this may take a few minutes and as I said you may need to put them on take them off and rearrange them um, just take it slowly so yeah do that all the way around each peg and then I will be back to show you the next step I have um, 
attach the bottom of the work to the top of the pegs. Um, now if you take a closer look, you see here in between these fishtail pieces, uh, you have a You have a space there with sort of like straight pieces of yarn. Um, the top bit there, well the bottom of the work, the loop, the last loop on that line you need to get and put over the peg if that makes sense. But there we go, we have our folded effect there. So this is going to create the area where our drawstring will be going. So it's sort of like a little tunnel, I suppose. Um, so yeah, so now all we need to do is yarn over. So like we did before when we did the e wrap stitches so we take the bottom arrange my things up we take the bottom loop pull it up over the top push down your your other um, loops so I'll show you that again you grab the bottom loop, pull it up over the top three and up over the top of the peg and then just move your other loops down the peg. Show you that again. So bottom loop, pull up over the top three loops and up over the top of the peg. Now do that all the way around the loom to secure our drawstring tunnel um, and then basically just carry on with that e-wrapping and knitting over um, until you create the body of your your work. Um, I will be back to show you what this looks like after I finish yarning over and how to do the next step. I've done that, I've yarned over on that, so now that's created our tunnel for our drawstring. Now I will take my the end of my loom hook and show you tunnel if I put it in there it's not going to go all the way through because the loom is in the way still but if you can see there it's a nice tunnel a nice space in there for our drawstring on both sides so that goes all the way through so that's how you do that. Right now the, the next step here is e-wrapping again. Um, but we're not going to be leaving a gap between the two red pegs this time. Because now we've, we've got the split for the drawstring. We now need to make the body of the bag. So what we're going to do here is you're not going to e-wrap this first red peg. You're going to leave that for now. And you're going to bring your working yarn round to the first blue peg here. And you're going to e-wrap that first blue peg. So around the back of the peg, around the front. There you go. And then just keep e-wrapping until you get to the 
that first red peg again which I will show you if you bear with me a few seconds there we go so now we e-wrap that red peg, that first red peg, there we go, and then bring down your working yarn and secure it on the anchor peg, and then just yarn over as normal. Oh, hang on, I've made a mistake there. So I've got my working yarn coming down this way. And it's going to get tangled. So I'm going to take off that one I've just yarned over. And I'm going to move my working yarn. There we go. I'm just going to hold it there for the minute because I don't want my working yarn to get tangled in the wrong places. There we go, that's better. So the working yarn has basically moved away from the, from the anchor peg now. So it's going to be a little bit tricky to anchor it. But that's okay where you've secured it with the the first yarn over on that red peg it should be fine and then just yarn over the second blue peg or the first blue peg rather and then again so basically now just keep doing this yarning over and then e-wrapping make sure you have four e-wrap loops on each peg before you yarn over and there you go you should create your body of your bag so bottom loop up over the top three loops pull your loops down then bottom loop up over the th the top three loops pull your loops down and just carry these steps on until you have the desired length you want for your bag now if you have larger soaps you can make the bag longer um, for instance if you use um, the naked shower gels um, from like Lush or what have you um, you can make these soap bags longer to fit those in um, you can even use bigger looms if you need to to um, house bigger soaps because I know some people use the handmade or home homemade soaps and sometimes they can be a bit bigger and bulkier so if you need to use a bigger loom go ahead um, also you could use a smaller loom um, I have a bit of work going on it already at the moment um, but you could use a flower one of these little flower looms um and you can make a dinky little bag soap bag for for smaller soaps like travel soaps maybe um but yeah so i'm gonna pause it here and i will restart and show you the next step which should be casting off of the loom right 
So, um, I have finished uh, the body of the bag. I've got my desired length. And look at those colours and how that pattern has turned out. Um, we've got the pink sort of colour here. Um, the blue, bluey greens, um, the light purple, and it sort of twists around the work. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased with that pattern and those colours. Um, a little problem I've had though, which can be solved once we've cast off of the loom. If you see here, it looks a little bit loose here. Now, if yours ends up like that, don't worry too much because once we cast off, we just pull the working yarn um, to gather it and to tighten that up. And also, we will be pulling the anchor tail here um, to tighten up this end of it and to tighten up around here. Um, now, the reason why this looseness here happens is because sometimes your um, your um, tension on the yarn when e-wrapping the pegs um, can be a little bit uneven. Um, now, where I have issues with my hands and stuff, I do struggle with keeping the tension even, especially when doing the split for the um, drawstring tunnel, um, where I've had to alternate between these two red pegs for that. Uh, that's where my tension has gone a little bit ski with. So that can be sorted after we've cast it off. So yeah, I'm just going to show you now how to cast off. So I'm going to bring the work up through the middle of my loom to the top. So it is inside out. And then maybe just fold that and roll it into the middle so it's out of the way a little. Um, and then what you need is you're going to need your scissors and your darning needle. So darning needle and scissors. Um, now get your working yarn. And we need a nice length of it, obviously not too long, but a decent enough length so we can thread it through the loops we need to thread it through. And I always allow myself for a bit extra for, you know, error's sake. Right, so now what you're going to need to do is cut that to free it from the cone or your ball of yarn if you're using a ball. And there we go. We have our free working yarn. Now, what we need to do is thread this end through our darning needle. Now I have a little bit of trouble threading needles, which is why I have this kind of needle. Um, because this I can bend and open the um, eyelet. So that hole can be made bigger. So it will be easier for me to get my yarn through that. So let's have a go at this. It is really, really tricky. Right, 
There we go. Got it. Then I can bend that back because I don't want that to be too wide because I'm, I'm going to need to be able to thread it through small gaps. So, right, now we've done that. Tie that up. Now I'm going to do a granny knot because that is the easiest one for me to do. And I think that's the best one to do on a needle, really. Um, now, you can tie it once if you like, but I double knot it. Um, do excuse the noise in the background, if you can hear that over my mic. Uh, my neighbours are currently doing some DIY, so do forgive that. Um, so yeah, I've double knotted that because it, it's a bit more it's a bit more secure. It's not gonna easily come off of that because I've I've had the issue before where I've only tied one knot and whilst threading it through the work it's come undone and I've lost the end and then my work's come unraveled on me. So I like to double knot it just to to make sure. Right, so now we've done that, what we need to do is go back to our work here and we need to find the loops on the first blue peg. You should have three loops on each peg at this point. So you go underneath the bottom of go to the bottom of the peg and go up underneath all three loops at the same time it might be a little bit tricky at first to do the first few pegs because they are the loops can be a little bit tight um, and if you, I've got quite a big needle here. I do have smaller ones, but the bigger ones are easier for me to grip. So if you are struggling getting your bigger needle through there, you might need to use a smaller one. Um, and then do the same again on the next peg. So go, go to the bottom of the peg below and underneath all three of those loops and up through the top. This will get slightly easier as you go. And then what you can do if you find it's getting too tricky for you to do it you can take off that first, or have a go at taking off that first one. If you can't get it over the peg, then just pull the peg out of the loom, like so. There we go. And don't worry, that will not unravel. Them loops will not unravel because it has been secured by what we are now calling our cast off yarn. So don't pull this one out yet though because we haven't thread that one yet and there will be issues. So see how easier that is? There we go. See that's got that's got looser. So from the bottom up through the top Bear with, excuse me. Right, there we go. And then just keep doing that on every peg. So keep doing that. Make sure you go through the bottom of every every peg, every loop on every peg. Um, so yeah, I'm going to pause here again whilst I finish all of these pegs. 
So guys, um, my I just had a technical error. My OBS software just went all stupid, um, and told me that I was recording. So I carried on with the work, chatting away, um, doing the next steps, um. And then when I stopped, paused again, um, I went to check to see the video was in the save file and it was all there stored away. Um, and there was no video there. So I've got come back to OBS and had a look and it had a hiccup and told me that I was recording when I wasn't. So I'm not sure what has happened there. Some sort of glitch in the system. But I'll try and explain to you what I've done. Um, so I believe the last video I did before the OBS went all silly on me was we were casting off. So I cast off of the loom. Then what I did was cut myself free. Oh no, I'd already cut myself free from that. Yeah, so we cast off of the loom um, and then we um, started to pull on the bottom here. We had it inside out and then you pull on your working yarn so that it gathers the bottom of your work and pulls any loose bits here tight and if you remember we had quite a big loose bit here which we've managed to tighten up then what I did after gathering the bottom was I sew I sewed just these loops here in around there and knotted it a couple of times to secure it so that the bottom will not come undone. Um, and then what I did was I cut the working yarn away because we didn't need it anymore. Um, that's our working yarn. Then I went to the top of the work here and started and unraveled the um, anchor tail yarn thing from the hair clip um, and then started to tug on that to tighten up this kind of seam here that was made when we joined, joined the top of the work to the pegs to create the drawstring tunnel. So that has tightened up that seam there. And now what we're going to do. Um, also what we did was we, I pulled around the work a little bit, manipulated it to tighten up any existing areas that were a bit loose. You might need to do that a couple of times. Um, so yeah, and I mean, here, this here, where it's so loose for me is because I'm terrible at controlling the, um, the tension because of the, my disabilities in my hands and stuff. I do struggle to, with the tension of the yarn. Uh, with my grip and, you know, just the pulling on, on it and stuff. It's quite difficult for me. 
So that's why mine's a little bit loose. But I'm not too too bothered about it. I'm not striving for perfection. Um, I am just making something nice for myself. So yeah, um, yeah. So this was the working yarn. What's left over from it? Now there's quite a bit there. Don't throw any of that off cuts out keep hold of it because they come in handy when you are making things like pom-poms or flowers or you need to do a quick little touch up on a bit of work or you need to stitch a button to some to something um you know so they come in handy for that so so don't throw them out um, I put mine in a little jar and leave them there till I need them. Um, so we've done that. Right now we need our darning needle again. And what we're going to do is we're going to get this anchor yarn. And we're going to tie that to the needle. See, this anchor yarn, yarn is very long now since pulling it through here. Right, so. Let's try and get that through the hole. There we go. So I'm going to, again, granny knot tie that. And probably double knot it as well, just to make sure it's doubly secure. So there we go, we are secure on there. Now, sorry, I'm just double checking that my OBS software is still recording. Right, and it is, so, whew, tells me it is anyway, so yeah. Um, so now we've done that. We need to clear up this little area here. So a little bit of stitching to neaten that up and to tighten it up and yeah, just to secure it really. So it's like in a drawer here what loop you go through. So I'm going to go through doesn't matter really but try and get it cl as close to the bottom of the the split as you can through that bit pull that might gather it a little I'm going to have to lay that down on the desk a little bit. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can... Oh, that's out. There with. There we go. Might have made the image a little bit more blurry, but... It's easier for me to do this while it's laid on the desk. do is make sure I'm not stitching up that hole where the where the drawstring is going to go because that would be disastrous that is the hole there yeah there it is no, it's there there we are. Pull on that a little bit just to open that hole up. 
so I can see where it is. Five. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'll try not to get my fingers in the way too much. I'm trying to put it through an area where it's going to be neat and tidy. And there won't be too much messiness on the outside of the work. If all the messiness is hidden on the inside, that is going to be better. And the works are going to look better. As you'll go in, keep pulling down on this to try and tighten all that up. There we are. And I think that's probably the best I'm going to get there. So now I'm going to tie off in a sec. I'm going to bring that down through there. Getting a little bit tangled. Right. There we are. So now I'm going to tie off. And what I'm going to do is go up through these loops here. And then go round and through those same loops, through the bottom of those same loops again. And once again. And this time I'm going to tie it. So I put that. And then I'm going to go through it again and tie again. Double knots because, yeah, I want to doubly secure it. I'm going through that same knot to create a double knot and then pull tight on it or as tight as you can go there we are now it looks messy there a bit but I'm not too worried because most of that messiness will be on the inside so now I'm going to Cut that yarn as close to the knot as possible. There we go. I'll move that to one side because we don't need that at the moment. So now we're going to turn the work in the right way. Now that gap has opened up again a little. So I'm just going to manipulate the yarn a little bit to solve that issue. It's closing up slowly. But like I said, I'm not, I'm not out for perfection. Right, I'm happy with that. Let's see if our soap will go in it. There we go, our soap fits. It's a bit baggy. I've made this a little bit extra big, you know, so that if I want to put a bigger soap in there, I can do. 
So pull that out. Right, now we're going to put in the drawstring. So I'm going to pause here and then I will be back with all the stuff I need to put the drawstring in. So what I've got here, very shiny, um, a lot of ribbon. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to be using as a drawstring uh, because I find it easier and I like the ribbons. They look really colourful and really cool. Um, now if you wanted to make an eye cord um, then go ahead and do that. I, f I myself find making eye cords a little bit tricky at times. Um, so yeah if you want to make an eye cord go ahead you can use that or if you just want to use a piece of yarn and t thread that in and use that then then do that do what's easiest for you um now i'm just trying to decide which color ribbon to use this is like a bright neon sort of yellow see which one goes with the work that might be a bit a bit too bright um we have the light sort of green maybe that that will probably work actually um or this light purple light purple will work as well um yeah i think i'm gonna go for that light purple so yeah these ribbons i got on amazon uh and they come in a big pack um and it was i can't remember exactly how much it was but it wasn't that expensive a couple of pounds um so yeah and they're quite good quality ribbon as well perfect for little projects like this right so we need to cut ourselves a piece of ribbon first i've got to get this sticky stuff off of here to free the ribbon Bear with me. Ah, there we go. Right, so let's see how much ribbon will I need. Because I don't want a really long drawstring. Put it on the ribbon and see. And then a little bit extra for error and for the knots. So yeah, that should be enough there. There we go. Right, so now we're going to need to thread this through our drawstring tunnel that we made so to do that I have an extra large darning needle so this is the same kind of darning needle that we used earlier but it's a little bigger um, and what we're going to do is like we did with the yarn, we're just going to thread the ribbon through and then tie it. I'm not going to double knot this ribbon. 
because I don't think I need to because it, what, it shouldn't come undone too easily plus I don't want to ruin the ribbon too much so there we go we're tied on so now get your work find the hole for your tunnel and then just put your needle down through there try not to come out the side there just keep going going it might be a little bit fiddly and a bit tricky so you might have to bear with me because I don't want to at any point if you find you can't go any further come out of the work between between the e-wrap areas the fishtail sort of v-shape areas don't go through the v-shape fishtail areas right so just come out through here to pull that through then what you need to do is go back through that same area you came out of that same hole and then just carry on down through your tunnel like so until you get till you come out of the other end and then pull that through There we go, now it's as if the needle and the ribbon never went through there. Right, so now we've done that, I want to make sure we have an even amount of ribbon on each side, and I want to make sure the shiny part of the ribbon. So I have the ribbon where it's really shiny on one side and a little bit dull on the other. So I want the really shiny bit to face outwards. So I'm just going to manipulate these ribbons to make sure they're facing the right way, which luckily they are. Right, so now you can either just tie this and snip off the excess and there you go your drawstring is done or you can add fancy beads or fancy toggles which I have a nice big jar here of them so I don't think that toggle works I think that one's a little big and a little bit too the wood's too dark on that one um, we have this little toggle that might that'll work well that looks nice or we've got a load of different beads with different little patterns on um, That's cool. That one has little circles on. Um, there's even one here that looks like a football, a soccer ball. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I'm going to go for the toggle, to be honest. Quite like the toggle. So I'm going to go for that little toggle there, put this away so it's not getting in our way. There we are. 
So now to attach our toggle, we are still attached to our darning needle here. So we just make sure we're putting it through the right side of the toggle. Now sometimes these wooden beads and wooden toggles might be a little bit rough in the hole so you might need to get some kind of small file and file it down if you're using yarn for it because it will get snagged on yarn. So there we go and now what we need to do is put the other ribbon through. So we're going to untie this bit of ribbon here from the, the darning needle. There we are. I'm going to pull that slightly. I'm going to make sure we've got roughly the right sort of length on each side. That should do. Right. Just got to thread this side now. There we are. There we go. Right, now make sure this ribbon isn't twisted too much. There we are. Then just thread through the second hole through the top of there and then pull it down through. There we are. Right. We might need to manipulate these ribbons a little bit because they'll come a little bit twisted um, when you pull it all through. Here it's got a bit twisted as well. There we are. So that's that. Now we can undo the darning needle and move that out of the way because we don't need that anymore. There we go. Now we can get rid of that, put that to the side. Right. Don't worry if your ribbon looks a bit too long. You're going to need to tie knots here now. So, so, where do we want our knots? Because if we pull this tight, So we're going to want our knot, I'd say probably, let's move that down, probably about there. I'd say that's a good amount. So just, again, I'm doing it like a granny knot. If you know how to do fancier knots, um, go ahead and do that. Now, if you want a double knot here, go ahead because that's going to secure it a little bit better. Oh, 
Oh, I'm not has gone too far down. Don't worry, we can use our pro our loom hook to undo that. I pulled that a bit too quickly, I think. Bear with me. I'm all fingers and thumbs. There we are, starting to come undone. Right now, let's try that knot again for the second time. So, double knot in. Slowly pull it. There we go, that's better. Right, so there's the double knot. So now we don't need this excess ribbon, do we? So get our scissors, cut that just below the knot. Get rid of that again. Don't throw those little bits of ribbon out. They might come in handy for little bits of touch up work or um, even like you can use it for artwork, I suppose. Right, so now we've got our knot tied in our drawstring. Now with ribbon, sometimes it can become frayed. Um, and to stop that fraying, if you bear with me a second, I've just got to grab a lighter. There we go. So get yourself a lighter. Uh, any children, little children, you might need to get an adult to do this for you. So... Gently singe the end of the ribbon there. You can see it's already becoming a little bit frayed. So I'm going to do that slightly away from the camera. I don't want to light a flame right under my camera lens. That probably won't be good for the camera. Just be careful not to light your your yarn. And what this does is slightly melts the end of the ribbon and then push it in like that. Be careful because that will be hot. I have asbestos fingers um, and I don't really have much feeling in my fingertips or this hand. I don't know if you can see there. I have a nice big scar across my palm there. Um, I fell into a fire, an open fireplace, when I was a toddler. And the fireplace was lit. And then, of course, I ended up lit once I had fallen into it. Um, a lot of skin grafts, a lot of pain. Um, I don't really remember it, 
because I was so small, but apparently I screamed the house down, screamed the ambulance down, and then screamed the hospital down, um, you know, so, but yes, now our work is done, we are finished, our soap saver is done, and it's ready to start saving soap, so let's test it again. Let's put our soap in there. Let's do up our drawstring so that our soap cannot escape. But look at those colours though. Those colours I'm really happy with how that is turned out. It's kind of diagonal stripes of the colour. Um, I really, really am pleased with that. But that kind of lets it down a little bit there, but I couldn't have that. My tension was all off, but I'm sure yours won't be. Um, but yeah, there's our soap saver. Um, now, you can always make these with different types of yarn, different types of stitch. Um, you can uh, add buttons to them. Uh, just if you are making it as a soap saver, use a natural type of yarn such as the 100% cotton and I do recommend Cotton Kings uh, they are a very good yarn they feel very soft and they have so many cool different colours um, yeah they're great um, but yeah if you wanted to make it as a gift bag or something uh, you can use any type of yarn you like acrylic is usually good for that um and yeah then you can make flowers on your little flower looms and add those stitch them onto it or stitch buttons and beads and whatever you want really you can even make a miniature version of this on the smaller loom the flower loom which I have here, which has a piece of work I was doing on already. So this loom, as you can see, is much smaller than that loom. So you will get a small bag and it is perfect. If I bring if I put it on the screen here now, they are perfect for putting um, for storing or gifting little items like jewellery like necklaces or what have you um, so yeah that is a picture of one I made a um, couple of days ago I believe last week um, yeah so basically you just follow the same steps I did with the soap saver here but you transfer it to a smaller loom. Now the soap saver, this size one took me, will take me usually about a day if I do it from morning non-stop through to the evening it will take me a day to make one of these but then I'm a very slow knitter. Um, with the smaller one I could make that in a couple of hours in an afternoon um, and the small ones are so cute they look so cute and dinky um, but yeah that's how you make a soap saver um, and I hope you've enjoyed and maybe learnt something from my first ever knitting tutorial um, I've only just learned how to knit during the first lockdown I started um, so yeah
I'm still kind of learning myself a little bit, but I thought I'd share my soap saver and baggies with you. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, and I shall see you all later. Bye-bye.